it's just not a way that you could i wouldn't i wouldn't be like oh, i'm going to short because asian session is normally bearish you obviously have to have to correct setups and you can short it like last night you did have a potential short off the asian session yeah because you started your asian session and straight away you start to retrace but then you are also coming up into resistance so it's like you know, you wouldn't short because it's Asian session. You shorted because you were at resistance. And now you obviously threw it. So it was only it could have only been a quick trade. <laughs> hey, Dan, do you spend all your time on the PC? I mean, well, obviously, recently we're in like lockdown. So I don't I don't really have an option of doing much. It's not like if I wanted to go out now to the shops, I could go to the shops. I couldn't meet anyone for, for you know, for like a drink or a meal. In England, we're in full lockdown at the moment. So... Obviously, recently, there's there's literally nothing I can do. It's, it's uh, you know, I have no option, really, but to just, uh, you know, on my weekends, I don't really like to be around at the computer because that's what I'm doing Monday to Friday. But it's just because of lockdown at the moment. I can't really go out and do stuff on the weekends or no, no, nothing that, nothing major. You know, I couldn't go to the gym or I couldn't go to, uh, you know, like the spa or something. Uh, this is a pretty interesting question. So the guy says, Hi, I have been studying your modules and have learned a lot over the last three months, but he is still losing trades when doing technical analysis. Uh, he feels like he's not getting anywhere. Do you have any advice? And I think this is normal. I, I think this is normal. So uh, the, the question basically is he, I suppose he's joined either the contenders and champions and he's been doing it for, you know, doing it for three months and he's losing a lot of trades. Um, and I feel that that is really normal. You know, if you try and think about, let's say, let's say we have a sample size and this, this is a, this is a, this is a made up statistic. So this isn't, this isn't real, but let's just say we take up a made up statistic of, of let's say we have a hundred members and I would say the likelihood, and let's say that all the members are all three months old. Okay. So we delete all the statistics and we, we start again and we start from scratch as if chart champions was created today. Or, or was created three months ago. Let's say it was created at the 1st of January and now we're coming into April, yeah? Of the 100 people that have joined the group in January and now we're about to go into April 3, coming on four months later, how much of the members do I think would be profitable based off of their own technical analysis and ideas after three months in the group? I would say maybe 10%. So maybe you have 10 people that are winning and I would say 90% of the people in the group would still be losing. Um, and that's just based off of experience of running the group now for a few years and, and basically just acknowledging it's not really that realistic to think three years is enough time, sorry, three months is enough time to, in my opinion, first of all, study the content. Second of all, understand the content because there's a difference between watching and understanding you can watch all the videos but it doesn't mean you understand the videos so I, I think three months to watch the videos understand the videos implement the videos create a strategy test the strategy and then become a profitable trader is just not realistic to happen in three months so that really would be my viewpoint for you there mate that I think you're in a normal position. So you've been, you know, he's been in a group three months. He's still losing a lot of trades. And I would say, I wouldn't really expect anything different. If I'm totally honest, I wouldn't really expect you. I would be more surprised if you come to me and you say, hey, I've been in the group three months and I'm now trading my own analysis and I'm absolutely like killing it, making loads of money. I would be more surprised with somebody that says that making loads of money after three months than somebody that says, hey, I'm still struggling right now, you know, uh, give me some guidance sort of thing. Um, because yeah, just three months is not a lot of time. Really like three months is not a lot of time. Um, so the, my, my advice would, would be to you start to do the tips that we've given you, which is like cr trade of smaller amounts and like build up the confidence. So like start to try and build a strategy. Cause the thing is, I don't actually give a strategy per se. You have to kind of like make the impact. You know, you have to implement these sort of things yourself. So maybe you like to use the Fibonacci tools or then design a strategy around fibs, for example. And, uh, you know, start to record how you trade with the fibs. Start to record when you win, when you lose, why you win, why you lose. Um, 
yeah, so that, that, that's really what I would say to try and help you there. The, 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 just the simple fact of... Um, I mean, I don't know how much of the videos you've watched, whether you've watched 100% of them or you've only like 25% through. I have no, obviously, I have no idea. But I would say watch all the videos through. And this is what I generally say and give people for tips is watch all the videos once. Watch all the videos a second time and make notes. So I, in my opinion... And I know from people that have come into the group and they have, you know, some of the most successful traders in the group right now, they've all done the exact same thing. They they watch all the videos once, they watch them all through a second time, making lots and lots of notes, and then they'll watch all the videos for a third time to actually cement all the knowledge. And so that, that's kind of the recommendation that I like to pass on, just because I know that the people that are actually successful, that's what they've done. So I would generally say watch all the videos free once. You're probably not going to understand a lot of the content the first time. Um, you know, some of the content to understand, you have to watch like the last video to understand, you know, the middle videos. So what you let's just say, watch all the videos through. You might not understand it all at first. It's fine. Watch them through the second time. Make loads of notes the second time. You should have had all the base theory sort of in your head at least. You might not understand it all the second time. After your second watch through of, all the notes in front of you, that's when you can start to really understand it, make, you know, mark out your chart, start to do your technical analysis. I don't think you're going to be profitable at that time. Then you want to watch them through a third time when you've started to trade a little bit, you've taken a lot of losses likely, but that third time is really when you want to fully understand everything that we're going on about. So you want to understand when we're talking about the footprint chart, exactly what's going on, how you monitor your open interest, how you monitor your you know, your, you know, when you're looking for your liquidations, etc, etc, etc. So you understand everything on the third time, you would hope. And then I think you're ready to move into the realm of, you know, I really think I've, I, if I'm honest, I think at that point you should be, you should be on the realms of um, being profitable. Uh, obviously, once you've understood all the content, it still requires you to create a strategy. Um. And that's, you know, I can't say how long that's going to take. Some people will do that really quick and some people take a little bit longer to do that. But, um, sorry, I saw the comment of why are you in this cyberpunk? It's because I was playing cyberpunk, but now we're just chatting. Yeah, so that, that would be my tip for you really, mate. Uh, give it a bit more time, you know, don't beat yourself up. You don't want to be you don't want to be harsh to yourself. Just uh, keep 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 specific goals, maybe. So maybe your goal next week is to. Uh, uh, take 10 trades, maybe you take 10 trades and you lose 10 trades, but maybe you give yourself a target of take 10 trades based of what you of what you've learned thus far. And after the 10 trades, uh, see what went right with them, see what went wrong with them. And, you know, it, it really is, as a newer trader, a matter of finding yourself. So it really is like a matter of understanding how you trade. Because how I trade isn't going to be how everybody else trades. Um, so, yeah, I hope that was a nice answer for you anyway. <laughs> um, the thing is, I would put on background music, but it's all copyrighted. So if, if I started to put on Kanye West right now, it's gonna uh, it's gonna copyright me. So this is why um, this is why there's no background music because it's coming into my headphones. <laughs> uh, this guy says, but with ten wins, ten losses, you will still be profitable. That that is true. So you can still be profitable with a fifty percent win rate, definitely. Um, so you, you can win 10 trades. Obviously you want to be going maybe one win, long loss, one win, long loss, two wins, two losses. But let's just say you have a 50% win rate, which I, I don't really think is very good, but you can still, obviously you can still be profitable with 50% win rate. And that's the main thing, of course, being profitable. Do I think it's a good win rate? No, not really. But Hey, if you are making money at the end of the day, then that's, that's the most important thing. And then it's obviously a work in progress. So how do you how do you go from 50% win rate to 60% win rate? Well, you're going to have to study why you're taking those losses. What's going wrong with you? Uh, you know, is there a common mistake that you're making on your losses? Are you are you closing too quickly? Are you closing, you know, 
there's obviously unlimited possibilities of why you could be taking those losses, but that's why you want to record why you're losing to, to work out what the uh, commonality is with those losses, no? Wow, this is a long question. Let's see what it says. Um, hello from Hong Kong. Hello, mate. Hello, hello, hello. So he's in Hong Kong right now. Chart Champions Daniel. Thanks again for the amount of value that you give to this community. I've paid tens of thousands to join other programs and none of them compare to the value and education you provide at such a low price point. It is clear that you are not doing this for the money like many others. Grateful to be here as a contender and when I am ready, I will upgrade to champions. No question, but good comment, mate. Uh, <laughs> I'm more than happy to help. Can you explain your thought process as to why you think this will push up for a bull trap? Yeah, basically my thought process, it's just like you have to think to yourself, is this a good long or is this a good short? So I always think you have to, you have three options in trading. Is this a good long? Is this a good short? Or shall I just do nothing? Which is just do not trade. Do I think I've got a good short right now? No. Do I think I have a good long right now? No. So my opinion is I'll stay out of the market until... I see there's a good opportunity for a long or I see there's a good opportunity for a short. And the reason why I think it will push up, well, I mean, this local trend is really bullish now. Locally here, we're on a really bullish uptrend. So one would say it's more likely that we push up. I personally would want it to push up because personally, I'm looking for a new short and I always want a short from as high as possible. So like my, my, my like is I'd like it to push up. Obviously, it doesn't really matter what I like or want. But I'd want, I'd like it to push up. <laughs> and really simply, I just don't really have a trade where we are here. I wouldn't long this, I wouldn't short this. So I'm really, I'm really being patient. But I also don't trade the weekends. So, um, yeah, there's, there's that question. Um, yeah, I think you can be, the next question is about the swing failure pattern. Yeah, I think you can be aware of this for a swing failure pattern. You might not swing failure, of course, you might not. But I think it's a level where you can be aware of that maybe you get a swing failure. And that's the thing. You just got to react to it. Just got to react. Uh, so this is a really interesting one. The guy says, um, lowering your position size will often be the solution. Yeah, I think a lot of people struggle because they, you know, especially in the group, um, you know, a lot of people have the target of... Um, you know, a lot of people will come into the group and they'll be like, right, I need to make my subscription back this month. Otherwise, I can't afford the next month. And they, they're, um, you know, a lot of people will be forcing trades. You know, let's say they're brand new to trading and they've come into the group, um, which happens quite a lot. They, a lot of people that join us have no experience of trading at all. And they, they don't even know what trading view is. Uh, they don't know what candles are. You know, we have some really big new traders, like really big newer traders even inside of the champions group that we have a lot of new traders but they'll they'll have the perspective that oh we've just paid for the for the group and now we need to make the money back this month um to be able to afford next month and um you know these people then will will start trading with you know 20 grand thinking that they need to make their fees back or whatever when they have no knowledge at all but then at the same time they 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 have this need of trying to make the fees back to afford the next month and it's just like it's just not this like this scenario just never ends well like this scenario is just never going to end well um because they're so focused on taking the trades and trying to follow the trades that they don't actually end up studying any of the materials um and it's just like yeah but to go back to the to go back to the question is though or like the, the the statement lots of people are just trading too big a position sizes like i think if you're a learning trader what what's the point in trading like 50 grand position size 100 grand position there's just there's no just no point um like that's just my viewpoint i i just don't see the need to trade i i personally think if you're learning why are you trading with more than like 10 grand um uh, there's just no point in doing it like to to know that it's likely that you're going to be taking like more losses than wins why do you need to be trading with a hundred grand when it's more likely that you're going to be losing money than making it because it's just not real it's just not realistic to think that you're going to try and start a new skill and in my opinion trading is a skill that has to be learned y you know you wouldn't 
think to yourself, I want to be tomorrow. I want to be a uh, hundred meter. No, let, let's do something a little bit different. Um, tomorrow, I want to be a mechanic. You know, I, I want to go and fix cars. I turn up the next day and I have no idea what I'm doing. I don't know. I don't know what any of the, I don't know anything about an engine. I don't know anything about anything of the cars. So it's going to take time to learn how to fix the car now. <laughs> and the same with trading. Uh, I'm not going to come into trading and the next day think I'm going to start making money in a field where 95% of people lose money. And it's statistically very difficult. It's just not realistic to think I'm going to start making money tomorrow, is it? So what's the point in, in trading where to learn you lose? You know, you have to lose to learn, really. You know, learn, losing in trading is actually giving you a lot of positives because you should be learning from every loss you take. So to, instead of viewing every loss as a painful experience, you should view every loss as actually a learning experience. Well, that's the way I would recommend. And then also moving on and expanding upon that point is what's the point in losing a uh, thousand pounds every loss when you could be losing 10 pounds every loss? You know, I do think that you should lose a little bit of money when you're learning because there's a difference between paper trading and actually having real money on the line, like the psychological differences, you know, the emotions that are associated with losing real money. Who cares if you lose paper money? You don't, you're not going to take it as seriously. So you know, I would always say, you know, you should have a little bit of money on the line. Uh, you know, people can do what they want, obviously. Um, but I would always say, have it, even if you're just risking a, a quid, you know, at least you have a little bit of money on the line. But then as you re as you go over, over time, you know, may maybe the, for the first, maybe for the first six months, you are trading £100 every time. And then as you start to go from a 40% win rate, or, or, you know, let's say most people are starting with their 30% win rates. As you go from 30% win rate to 40% win rate, go from $100 trades to $150 trades. And as you go from 45% win rate, bringing that above 50%, so you go to a 55% win rate, change those 200, 200 quid trades, you, know, you can be upping that to $1,000 a trade. And then you go from there, don't you? The, the, the better you get your win rate, the more money you start trading with. It doesn't make sense to... <laughs> do what a lot of people do which is start trading and automatically deposit everything that they have you know how many times have i heard the story daniel i've lost everything daniel you know people will join the group and their their initial story is i've joined this group because i've lost everything and it's just like you know i i hear it too many times but people will people will be like i started to trade and i lost all my money and now i want to learn whereas the 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 the, the story really should be I want to learn so I don't lose money to start with, no? But unfortunately, like, this is just the cycle and this is just what happens. Um, I don't know why, really. <laughs> I don't really know why this happens, but people love to lose. I guess it, I just, I guess it's just like people get interested, they invest a bit of money, they lose it all, and then they understand that they need to, they, they, there's something to be learned. But um, yeah, the amount of people that will join and be like, hey, I've lost everything. Um <laughs> but um, obviously i'm not laughing at it it's not funny but it's just like this is just what happens you know this is just what happens. hey i've lost everything now i want to learn and it should be you know you don't need to lose everything to know that you need to learn but yeah that, that's just what happens yeah. um um advice for a teenage trader yeah kind of just what i've been going over here that you don't need to um don't don't lose everything to know that you need to learn. Learn before you lo lose. Really, yeah, I guess is a good advice for. Obviously, you can you can have a lot more risk as a as a younger guy or girl. You can have a lot more risk, but I am eighteen and going to university for the second semester now, and I really want to do full time trading. There is not much time left after my job to earn money for trading and studying. Would you skip one or two semesters and chase your dream? Or would you... Uh, oh, I think this is a really good... This is really recommended that you watch the when sailing... The when sailing video that I recorded today. I don't want to give away too much, but we talked about taking risks, quitting jobs, and why it's beneficial if you want to be a full-time trader. You have to take the risk. Do I personally feel, feel that it's worth the risk of quitting a job and going for it in terms of full-time trading i mean you will hear my perspective in the video i don't want to give too much away because i think it's a really interesting video that i'm going to recommend everybody watches 
but yeah, uh, personally, I think that it's worthwhile to. I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to try and tell you to quit anything. You know, you got to make the decision yourself. So you obviously you have to make the decision yourself. My opinion really should not influence you in that regards, because otherwise you're going to regret it. That you have to feel comfortable with the decision, but um, if you feel really comfortable and you're motivated enough and you understand the, the you know the potential risks that are obviously involved involved with it going full time. But personally, I feel full time trading is the best job you're ever going to have. Why you're working for yourself, you can literally work wherever you want. You can work when you want, where you want, and who with whom you want. So the the reason why I love, you know, the aspect of trading and why I love to see. You know, when when sailing is like they're just the perfect example of this, you know, quits, quits his job, starts to trade, does it really successfully. And it's just like. Yeah, to, 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 to even be in the corporate nine to five world where, you you know, people are feeling the same thing. So it's like, oh, man, it's Monday morning. I got to wake up and I got to go to work. And the thing is, in corporate, you work really, really, really hard. And then it's your boss that buys a new car. You know, you put in all the blood, sweat and tears and then it's the boss that buys the car at the end of the day. Whereas I think you at least if you're if at least if you're trading and you're working really hard and you're making good trades and good money, you know, you re reap all the rewards unless you are in England and you pay and you pay 50 percent tax. And then obviously you trade really hard and, uh, you know, that that hundred grand that you make this year. Well, um. Well, let's say that say you make 200 grand in the year. So when you hit the tax bracket, you know, you make 200 grand that year. Guess what? You give 50 percent of it to the tax man and, and you've only then ended up with 100 grand, which is obviously pretty devastating. <laughs> um, but uh, that, that's why you could look into places which don't which don't charge extortionate rates of tax. Um, this question, do you think giving your alpha to your group will reduce the? In, in my opinion, no. And I've spoke about this before. A lot of people are like, don't you think like sharing strategies is going to reduce the effectiveness of them? And I've said this once and I will say it again. Let's say my videos reach 10,000 people. Okay? Let's say the average YouTube video gets 10,000 views. Of the 10,000 viewers, how many people will sign up to the course? I mean, the, the, the hit rate is, let, 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 let's say, 50% join. Let's just say 50% of the viewers join. So then we have 5,000 people in the group. How many people that joined the group then actually will take it seriously enough to the amount of people that will join the group and not even watch the videos is really high. You know, we can see the stats of people that bother to watch the videos and, and it's crazy, but people will join the group and they don't even bother to watch it, uh, which is just really weird. But yeah, so from, from the 10,000 that view it, only 5,000 are likely to join the website. Over the 5,000 that join the website, how many of the people are, are likely to actually watch all the videos? We could say about a thousand, a thousand people of the people will, will watch all the videos. And for of the thousand that end up watching all the videos, how much are they going to take it, you know, consistently enough to do the trading challenge that we give with the with the low amount of trades, working out their own strategies, putting in, put, you know, going on to the next level, which is you know, actually taking the trades and doing it, doing it successfully. I mean, we're probably talking at the end of it, maybe 500 people. So of, 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 we could we could say five to 10 percent of the of the viewers that we get are actually going to actually going to take it seriously. So when we're talking. Such a low percentage of people that will really even try, you know, it's kind of like it's not really a worry to share out the information because the amount of people that are actually going to use it is is very low uh in that regards so you have to think although we get like ten thousand views a video it's only it's only likely five percent of the people are actually going to bother to study and learn it at the end of the day to even make anything of it so the percentage of people is so low there really is not the risk that many people think um you know people are going to be like hey if this video starts getting a hundred thousand views you, your your methods might become not as effective but then when you remember that, you know, five, maybe less than 5% of the viewers are actually going to bother to study it. Yeah, I just don't really think it's a worry. And at the same time, I am always adjusting. It's not like I have the same strategies even from one year ago that I have today. So I'm always, I'm always adjusting and I'm always creating. So recently I done my liquidation strategy. That's not a strategy that I had last year. 
This was a strategy that I found, made, studied, recorded statistics, and then shared. How many of the, uh, you know, and that was a really, really, really good strategy. And this was like literally a unique strategy that you just have. Well, it's just my strategy. So I've ne never, you never ever see everyone else using it unless they have learned it from me. Um, so in that regard, like if, if something that I've taught doesn't work, well, the thing is like, I'm still recording every trade that I do. So if, if I start to go on a losing streak, let's say, then I'm going to realize that something's going wrong. So I'm not going to suddenly start, keep on using this, uh, using a technique, which is clearly no longer working. I would have to work out why is this stopped working? What do I need to adapt and how can I move forwards? So do I think sharing will reduce my winning edge? Partly no, because I don't think a lot of people are even going to bother to learn. <laughs> just because people are late, people are inherently lazy, you know, people just are lazy. Um, I'm sorry, but yeah, a lot of people are, are lazy and they, they would prefer to say when buy, when sell than actually explain. <laughs> and on the other, and then on the other hands and on the other side of the coin, if it was the case that it started to lose, I could just recognize what's going wrong and adapt. So I'm not going to be stuck in my, stuck in the same ways of like, oh, I keep losing this trade and I'm just going to be blind to the fact that it's no longer effective. No, I, I would like to think... <laughs> You know, and this has happened to me. Strategies that I used to lose, strategies that I used to use, I saw no longer were effective and I stopped using the strategy or I adapted the strategy. 